He is known for his contributions as a composer and his involvement in socialist youth groups. He honed his skills in Vienna and later emigrated to North America. His name is Hans Eisler. In the vibrant city of Leipzig, Germany, a legendary figure was born. His name was Hans Eisler, and he would go on to make groundbreaking contributions to the world of music. Raised in a family of intellectuals, with his father being a professor of philosophy, and his mother, a Lutheran, Hans grew up with a unique blend of influences. At a young age, he joined a socialist youth group, showing his early passion for social justice and equality. As Hans Eisler entered adulthood, his love for music became apparent. He studied composition and music theory in Vienna, immersing himself in the rich cultural scene of the city. It was during this time that he began to experiment with new musical styles and techniques, pushing the boundaries of traditional composition. One of his most significant works, the Hollywood Songbook, showcased his ability to blend classical music with popular styles, capturing the essence of the time. But it was not just his innovative compositions that set Hans Eisler apart. He was also deeply involved in political activism, becoming a member of the Communist Party. His music became a powerful tool for expressing his political beliefs and rallying support for social change. One of his most famous compositions, the Song of the United Front, became an anthem for workers' rights and solidarity. Hans Eisler's legacy extends far beyond his music. He left an indelible mark on the world of composition, challenging conventions and exploring new possibilities. His fusion of classical and popular music continues to inspire musicians today. But perhaps his most significant contribution was his ability to use music as a vehicle for political expression, reminding us of the power of art to ignite change in society. In the aftermath of the Great War, Hans Eisler, a former frontline soldier in the Austro-Hungarian army, found himself drawn to the vibrant artistic and political scene in Berlin. It was there that he studied under the tutelage of Arnold Schoenberg, becoming the first of Schoenberg's disciples to embrace the twelve-tone technique. Eisler's music began to take on a political tone, influenced by his growing support for the Communist Party of Germany. During this time, Eisler formed a close bond with playwright Bertolt Brecht, who had also recently turned to Marxism. The collaboration between the two artists would endure for the rest of Brecht's life. Eisler composed music for several of Brecht's plays, including The Decision, The Mother, and Schwieg in the Second World War. Together, they crafted protest songs that captured the political turmoil of Weimar Germany in the early 1930s, focusing on the struggles of the working class and the marginalized. One notable achievement during this period was Eisler's song cycle titled Zeitungsausmit, Op. 11. Although not written in the 12-tone technique, it laid the foundation for a musical style known as News Items. The cycle parroted a newspaper's layout and content, with songs resembling headlines and lyrics inspired by the struggles faced by ordinary Germans in the aftermath of World War I. Eisler's socialist leanings were reflected in the poignant and thought-provoking themes of the cycle. Eisler and Brecht's collaboration extended beyond the stage and into the streets. Their protest song, Solidarity Song, became a popular militant anthem, resonating with the working class and sung during street protests and public gatherings across Europe. They also composed the Ballad of Paragraph 218, the world's first song protesting laws against abortion, capturing their commitment to addressing social issues from the perspective of the marginalized. Do you want to explore more composers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.